Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week I finally get my Frostgrave wizard painted up, and if you watched the end of the video, you could find out how you could win a fabulous Monster Painter math rock bag. Wow, that would be so cool, wouldn't it? And here he is, my new enchanter, Fizz McGuffin. He has been on two missions now, and it's damn well time I painted him up. And here is his trusty apprentice, Frogo. He's mostly painted, but needs some details, and so the time has come for that as well. This old Mage Knight model has been playing the role of Throg, my man-at-arms. Unfortunately, my fellow players keep mistaking him for a barbarian, so I'm switching to this old confrontation miniature. The previous owner's paint job is pretty good. I've repaired his arm, and we'll get him all finished up and ready for the table. Spellcaster Issue 6 contains an excellent four-part campaign called Swords Against the Slime Lord. I've always wanted to play it, so I am painting up this old toy for the title role in hopes that I'll get to play it one day. Now these two pieces of terrain don't exactly scream out the frozen wastelands of Frostgrave, but we are playing the Maze of Malkor scenario, The Avery, next week, which is set in a magical, tropical microclimate. So I'm using that as an excuse to paint up this beautiful mud pit from Kromlich, as well as this uh, Tekaka bird objective marker from North Star Military, which will be the central treasure and goal of that scenario. All right, it's time to get painting. And I am starting with the Slime Lord. The miniature is a cheap plastic toy I acquired some time ago at a swap meet. He has been kicking around the studio for quite a while, and I thought I could use him as a Blood Wave, one of the hideous ooze monsters that are lurking in the maze of Malkor. But the more I looked at him, the more I realized his star potential. He really needs to be a boss monster and is absolutely perfect for the role of the Slime Lord. So that's what I'm going to do. He is glued down to a Reaper base and already has a base coat of dark green. I will be adding a couple of layers of dry brushing in lighter, brighter greens to bring out his sliminess. Next, I'm going to base coat the Slime Lord's Cyclopean eye in a sickly, sickly yellow brown color, and I will follow that up by base coating his toothy maw in a dark red. I really like this miniature. It's nice and simple, weird and scary. Now I'm going to add some nice bright yellow to that big old eye. This will give him a more vivid fever dream look, befitting a Slime Lord. I'm following this up with, by breaking out the old magnifying lens in order to paint his nasty, pointy, evil teeth. The second last step on this terrifying fellow is to paint in a tiny little iris on his big old eye in bright red. Uh, hopefully this will push the psychotic boss monster look of this model and really sell him as the mighty Slime Lord. And we finish off this bad boy with a technical pen. I am going to give him a black contracted little pupil because I think the Slime Lord is one crazy SOB. And uh, with that, it's on to the next model. And the other miniature I will be showing you how I paint is that mud pit by Kromlich. I really like all the Kromlich scatter terrain and I couldn't resist this thing. I am a sucker for terrain that is under $15. And while this is not a conventional piece of Frostgrave terrain, one of the beauties of Frostgrave are the scenarios that have unusual settings and call for unusual terrain. My Frostgrave group will be playing one of those kinds of scenarios in the coming weeks, and this gives me an excuse to paint up this lovely thing. To start with, I am applying a watery base coat of bright green in hopes of getting into all the crevasses and pits in this textured bo boiling mud pit. The next step is unsurprisingly a nice thorough wash of dark green. 
I added a tiny, tiny amount of dish detergent to this wash in order to break up the water tension and let it seep into all the tiny recesses that make up this beautifully textured piece of terrain. Hopefully that will bring out the mossy, overgrown qualities of the model and help it fit into the magical tropical microclimate it is destined for. Now I'm going to selectively dry brush on a variety of lighter, brighter greens. This will help bring out the textures and differentiate the details, and just as importantly, a surface with subtly different shades of green will look more natural and make the model more convincing. Next up is the mud part of the mud pit. I am going with a generous base coat of a warm yellow brown. It's a old fashioned kind of color called Mars Yellow, uh, right out of the 19th century. It's a lovely warm brown that I think will make for a very convincing boiling bubbling mud. Okay, the next step is to apply a wash of dark brown to the mud pit. When I did this, I failed to hit the record button, so instead we're skipping right to the following step, which is uh, dry brushing another layer of a nice, light, earthy yellow to the, to the mud. This will soften up the look and make the pit look nice and gooey. The final step is to apply a layer of brighter yellow to all the bubbles in the pit. This will make the, the detail pop out and will help make them look like bub bubbles of mud. Uh, and um, when you're doing this, you, I really should have used a better, more appropriate brush, but what do you do? Um, and with this complete, let's take a look at the wizard and his henchmen. Here is Fizz McGuffin and the boys, and while they are definitely the most important models, Watching me pick out all the fiddly details on them isn't very entertaining, so instead we get progress shots. And uh, it looks like Frogo is done. We'll replace him with the Takaka Bird objective marker. And bang! Let's look at our finished products. And here is the finished mud pit. And it looks great, and it will be an excellent part of the Maze of Malachor scenario, the aviary, which uh, I will be playing in a couple of weeks. But it'll also look good as part of a steaming jungle, or uh, an alien world, or really whatever I can fit it into. And now on to the boys. Fizz McGuffin is ready and will no longer be on the tabletop all unpainted and naked. He's an old war machine model of some sort, and I really like the way he turned out. Frogo has his details and is good to go. He was a, or is, a 3D print my buddy Lauren gifted to me a while back. Fizz's Man at Arms is done, and uh, I think I will rename him Smiley. The Takaka Bird objective marker is definitely worthy of being fought to the death over, and I look forward to that. The Mad Slime Lord can now plot in the shadows with his fresh paint job. I am quite happy with this lot. It was a fun project, and I think it turned out great. And here they all are, in their natural habitat, the frozen city of Felstad, preparing to battle out with the dreaded Slime Lord over possession of the precious Tekaka Bird. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. You must really want some Monster Painter swag. Well, this math rock bag could be yours, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below and then next week I'm going to put all the names of the commenters from this week's video and last week's video and draw a winner from the hat. It's just that easy. So get commenting. Next week on The Monster Painter, I build the Octagon of Battle out of a bunch of old junk, I hope. Remember to like comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring